Hey everybody on YouTube. My vacation's just about over and I've been thinking about playing Crusader Kings 2. It's a game I bought way back in 2012. Alright awesome, Kotaku said this game is exactly like Game of Thrones. I think I'm just gonna play Skyrim. Alright, I spent 10 bucks on this game. I've gotta play it for more than 30 minutes. Oh, screw this. I'm just going to play Skyrim. Oh, hey, Crusader Kings 2. Maybe I'll play that. I'm just kidding. I'm going to play Skyrim. I was going to play it years ago, but I guess other games got in the way. Concept. Today I'm playing Crusader Kings 2, released in 2012 by Paradox Interactive for Windows PC, Mac OS X, and Linux. The game is a grand strategy game and dynasty simulator, similar in some ways to a series like Civilization. Essentially you can pick and control a wide variety of rulers, such as kings, counts, religious leaders, and others. You will fight to control territory, use intrigue to assassinate kings, create alliances through marriage, all with the goal of continuing your dynasty through your heirs. The game takes place in the Middle Ages between 1066 and 1453. It features open-ended gameplay as you choose when you have accomplished your goals or failed. Review Okay, let's jump into the review. Graphics and Sound The graphics in Crusader Kings 2 are pretty good. Since this is a grand strategy game, mostly you're just looking at the map and the game renders it quite well. The different map views look good and switching between them doesn't seem to change performance. Zooming in and out of the map quickly can cause some frame dropping, but overall it runs well. The army and council units that populate the map are a bit low poly and lack much animation, but for a game like this it's understandable. The sound is good and the game has appropriately styled cues for gameplay events. sound effects are subtle and recorded well. The music is okay but varies too much in quality for my taste. Some songs seem like they really fit in the game as just period instrumental music, but sometimes you get songs with almost comically bad singing in the background. Interface One of my complaints about the game is the interface. The interface of this game really reminds me of really old RTS games like Age of Empires, which though good for the time, really haven't aged well. I wish modern games would get away from having 20 buttons scattered all over the screen, wrapped in ornate period designs. It just makes navigating them more confusing and cumbersome. However, the way it's set up, the game doesn't allow you to open more than a few menus at a time, which I do appreciate. It keeps the screen mostly uncluttered. The game in many ways suffers from information overload, and the interface doesn't help. Gameplay Crusader Kings 2 focuses on open-ended gameplay that plays out over generations of a dynasty. It's got solid features that make this game unique. If you've seen the series before, the game really does play out like an episode of Game of Thrones. It's got assassination, betrayal, political marriages, religious crusades, rebellions, regicide, tyrannical sociopathic kings, and more. I've never played a game where in the span of a few hours I plotted to kill my brother, married off my child to a sworn enemy to create a political alliance, and fabricate claims to land I didn't own so I could further my empire. This game's emergent gameplay and unpredictability is probably the thing I enjoyed the most. The game however does have its issues. It plays in a real-time, non-turn-based system that works well for the most part, but does have a few issues. War in particular can be frustrating, as the units have no moving animation. So though you have rival dates, it can be difficult to intercept another country's army, since you can't see how fast they're moving or in what direction. Though this may be more realistic, it doesn't lend itself well to good gameplay. Also, the real-time system can cause some headaches, as it's paused for any menu use, and several times I sat around wondering why nothing was happening, only to see my game had been paused the entire time. Again, this comes down to the interface being overly ornate and not being able to easily see the pause button. There's a large focus on stats. Seriously, this game is loaded with numbers, and it's overwhelming to a first-time player. Even after 10 hours of gameplay, I don't exactly know how many things work, and though you are presented with tons of data, if you don't have any context, it's hard to know what to do with it. Though the game has a pretty decent tutorial that no first-time player should skip, I think the game could use some sort of difficulty setting, or better yet, a tutorial that could give a few feature tiers so that you could get introduced to the basics of the game, and then it could slowly reveal all the complexity. 
The game has great deep gameplay elements that are fun to learn, but you'll need to be dedicated if you want to understand the entire game and be decent at it. The open-ended part of the game is nice, but it can create some issues with ending the game. For example, I spent hours as the King of Denmark, and during those hours I resisted a civil war from the same duke three times, I raised my heir and groomed him for succession, and after a complex series of events, I lost my crown. I figured at that moment my game would be over, and I would need to start again, but now I was suddenly playing as my lifelong enemy, and I could immediately name my original king heir to the throne? It just seemed weird to me, and it pulled me out of the overall feeling of the game. I feel like the game should have ended when I lost my crown. The basics of the game play pretty well, and after the tutorial you have a general idea of how the world works. However, that's the issue. You only know the basics. Learning more about all the inner workings of the game isn't easy. It's the kind of game where you need the wiki up on a second monitor. Not that it's impossible to learn. And the game does offer very verbose tooltips for almost all stats. But understanding those in a larger context is difficult. I was never exactly sure who to promote to certain council positions or how to manage the crown's wealth. I really enjoy Crusader Kings 2 gameplay, but honestly for me, it's simply too complex to ever really get into. It's been hard enough to simply write a review about it. I'll keep playing the game just to see all the fun political drama unfold, but beyond that, I simply don't have enough time to focus on getting good at or even fully understanding the game. Conclusion So would I recommend Crusader Kings 2? Honestly, it really depends. By the time I started this review, I was really getting into the game and starting to understand it better. However, that was after over 10 hours of gameplay. For anyone who wants a quick strategy game that you can play a few rounds of, this is not the game. This is a game that demands your attention and time, and without either of those the experience won't be good. But if you get obsessed and really love complex games, it may be for you. If I had to put a score on the game, I guess I would give it a... Oh f*** this, I'm just gonna play Skyrim. Hey everybody, that was my video for this week, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Leave a comment in the comments section and uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. See ya.